Hey everybody, Sam here, just touching base with a quick Cura 2.5 support tutorial. Um, a few people have been asking about this, and um, I'm probably going to do two or three parts on this just because there's enough to go over, but I wanted to get a quick, uh, quick uh, part one out there just to answer some basic questions that people have kind of been pinging me about. Um, so we're going to start off just by looking at uh, the results of some Cura 2.5 supports. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the settings, and then probably in part two, um, I'll actually go uh, into Cura 2.5 screen share and step by step through them. And then in part three, if I make it, we'll, we'll probably be in response to the inevitable questions and kind of worst case scenarios that people will, will I'm sure, bring to the table. Um, so let's just start looking at some of the results. So um, this part was printed like this on the build plate. Um, support was generated over this entire area. Um, as you can see, um, fairly flat surface. There's a little bit of artifacting here and here, but um, this whole piece popped off in one one chunk by the use of support interface, um, which is an option in Cura, I believe starting in Cura 2.3 at the least, and it might have even been as early as Cura 2.1, but if you can imagine, it's almost like a raft between your supported layer and the loose support material. Um, in fact, here's a good example. Um, here is a big chunk from this part right here. This part was printed like so. This was the support material underneath it. Um, here's traditional kind of Cura support, line support. Um, and then right as we get up to the, the surface that we need to support, it switches over to um, concentric. So it's basically just perimeters going out and out and out and out and out. Um, and I have it specified as a millimeter of, of this support interface. And then this was printed at 300 microns layer height, and there's a 300 micron gap between the support interface and the surface that it supported. So this was just like this when it came off the uh, when it came off the printer. And then I used, um, I believe, this knife here to kind of find that support interface, get in between it, pry it, get it started. And then once I'd done that, I switched over to um, kind of a pallet knife and just continued uh, prying that off all the way across. Took maybe a minute or two to get it off. This whole thing popped off as a chunk and we get this perfectly flat um, supported surface. Uh, it doesn't look quite as clean as a printed top surface, but it's so good uh, you could almost argue that you know dissolvable support material is unnecessary just because of how how clean that is. Um, and actually these uh, these areas here were also uh, supported and again, there's just a, a line support and then a millimeter of, of support interface on the, on the top and a millimeter of support interface on the bottom. And again, just use a, use a small tool to just kind of pop it out piece by piece. Um, I also printed this rather hot because this is a mechanical part. So I printed this and I believe uh, it was either 210 or 215. And so I, I had to get a little bit of the prying action. If this were more of a cosmetic part and I just wanted really clean uh, surfaces and very easy removal. Um, I probably would have not even needed to use any pry tools. I probably could have gotten it started with a fingernail and then just popped it off. But even with really hot printing, um, with very little cooling at all in fact, because this is going to have to uh, withstand some stress, um, you, you can still get really clean surfaces. It doesn't mean that you're going to end up with a, a welded part that you know is never coming off. Um, the other thing to think about, of course, is well what if you have support that is generated on top of a surface and then continues up to another surface? Very, uh, very similar scenario. Um, here's, a, here's a part from a, actually a prop. This is going to be part of a, a grip. And it was actually printed in, in a larger, uh, larger model um, where this piece was generated on top of this. This was on the build plate like so. Support material was generated up to another, to another uh, component up above it. And when in the part was done, uh, literally just get a knife blade underneath this, pop it off, and you can see that surface. There's a little bit of hazing, a little white hazing, where this piece popped off, and that's it. Aside from that, you've got perfect surfaces. So support interface isn't going to jack up your, your upper surfaces. If you're, if you're generating support in between upper surfaces and another part of the model, it's not something that you, you um, have to worry about there either. Um, now, um, this is something you're going to have to tune. Uh, 
I can give you my settings, and I'll probably give you the exact settings that I use for most of my printers in the second part of this of this uh, kind of tutorial series. But you're still going to have to tune it. Uh, every printer is a little bit different. Um, however, generally speaking, I I have a interface gap of no less than 0.2 millimeters. So what does that mean? Well, if you're printing at 0.1, you're going to have to go into that interface layer gap and you're actually going to have to change it from 0.1 to 0.2 because at 0.1 you're at the point where you really are going to have fusing between this interface layer and the surface and it's going to get very difficult to remove. Um, Cura only allows you to do integer multiples of your layer height so if you're printing at 0.3 like I did with this part you either have to do 0.3 or 0.6 0.6 is getting a little bit too far, 0.3 is right about perfect. For 0.2 micron parts, um, such as what this was printed at, uh, you can try 0.2 or 0.4, and you'll just have to kind of test that and see what, what ends up being the cleanest um, cleanest surface, the easiest to remove. If you start to get really big loops, well, it means you probably need to drop down to 0.2. Um, with a 0.1 uh, millimeter uh, layer height, you could try 0.2 or 0.3 and see which gives you the best results for your printer. Another thing to keep in mind, um, if your printer has a lot of vibrations or mechanical slop, that's going to result in poor support surfaces. There's no way around it. Um, the head as it's, as it's traveling over, I should flip that around, so as the head's traveling over that support interface, like so, if it's vibrating and there's a lot of, of uh, oscillations in the head, it's going to be getting further away from, but also closer to the interface layer, which means it's going to end up bonding more than you want. So it's important to have a, a printer that's tight, no play, no loose pulleys, um, no hot end uh, mounts that are vibrating. Um, those are all things that are going to decrease the um, uh, effectiveness of this support um, uh, mechanism. Um, yeah, that's about it, I think, for this video. I just want to quick throw that out there, give you some examples, show you how it's actually worked in real life, um, and get you looking at that section. So if you're looking at Cure 2.5 um, and you're wondering where this is, the first thing you're going to need to do is go into the Cure 2.5 um, settings and enable all for visibility. So you can see um, all of the settings. And then when you go down under support near the bottom, you'll see a, a checkbox for enabling support interface enable that and then it'll get, ask you some questions about how thick you want the interface to be, whether you want the pattern of the interface to be concentric like this, or whether you want it to be lines. I do concentric um, because um, it seems to be the easiest to remove and it works fairly well. Um, but you can play around with it obviously. Um, and then I also keep it between 0.8 and 1 millimeters and that's simply because I want this to be thick, I want it to be solid. I want this to break away as a single piece. I don't want to be picking little little pieces of support interface off. And I also printed it at 100% infill. You can vary that from anywhere from 100% down to 0%. Um, but I want I want this to be a plate. Um, and whether it's whether it's you know a curved surface like this that's coming off of a compound shape, I want that to come off as a single chunk. I don't want it breaking apart on me, and uh, and then having me to go in and, and do cleanup. I want it to be almost a lever, as it were. Um, what else? Well, I think a lot of the detail, a lot of the additional details, um, I'll talk about in the second part of this video, but, um, I would start playing with this now, um, enable it, test some, uh, print some test pieces to kind of get a feel for how it's, how it works for you, um, and then get, you know, um, get on the comments and start posting questions that I can address in part two. I already have some things I'm going to address regardless. But if I get some input, some questions in the comments, then I can wrap that into that, the second video and, and um, maybe get a little more detailed. Uh, one of the things is all of us print different items for different reasons, different ways. And so things that work for me and I'm going to talk about in the video, um, somebody might say, well, hey, I tried this and it completely didn't work. How would you get around that? Or how would you um, change the settings to make it work better? So I'm interested to see what, what you guys come up with. Um, anyways, hope this gets you off to a good start with using Cure 2.5 supports. Um, I've used... Uh, Simplify 3D supports, and um, in my opinion, um, these Cure 2.5 supports, when utilized with interface layers, 
are just as easy to get off and they leave just as smooth of, of, of an interface. Um, one of the other things to mention too is because we're printing this interface layer which is completely solid, this, this line infill can be as low as you want it. I think I printed this at 10% and to be honest for a lot of parts you could probably print it at 5% because even if you get a little distortion on the bottom layers of your interface, by the time it gets all the way to the top, you're going to have a perfect outline of whatever shape. Um, when I printed this part, I think I printed I printed the line support at 5% and then the one millimeter interface layer. And by the time it got up to the last portion of the interface layer, that shape was perfectly defined. And so the bottom layer is perfectly defined. I don't have rounding on my, on my, on my square edges there. The loops of material aren't falling off because there's nothing for them to, to stick to there. It's a perfect outline. So um, you can save some material and save some print time by doing this. Because um, the alternative, if you were using previous versions of Cura, if you wanted to get relatively dense um, supported surfaces that weren't really messy um, or fused, um, is you had to print really dense support material so that you didn't have big gaps for the for the uh, the material to have to kind of bridge and droop over. And of course, that took up a lot of print time and it used a lot of material. So um, this is a time saver and a material saver. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Um, again hit up the comments with questions, problems, or things that you want me to go into a little more detail on in part two. And I'll see you guys in a couple days.